hello everyone and welcome to my third video about encryption in the first video we talked about concepts in the second video we talked about symmetric algorithm and how to use cipher blockchaining and initialize vector now it is time to talk about a symmetric algorithm and using rsa let's jump to the code we have a text do not forget to like and subscribe it is the text and then we need to generate a key as i mentioned in the first video these asymmetric algorithms they need to have a public key and a private key the public key is the key that you can share with everyone and everyone using this key can encrypt something but you and you as the owner of the private key are the only one who can decrypt this message then first we need to generate the key if i go there let me just close everything else we need to create an rsa algorithm you can use it like that rsa create a method rsa.create it is something that i personally use but recently not recently but there is another practice to use this rsa if my keyword works yes this rsa crypto service provider the result is the same but yeah let's stick to this rsa one first we create it do not forget to wrap it inside the using we need to export it to a string and this string should be in xml format it accepts one property which says is it a private parameter or not when we say no false then it is not private then we can create public key using this method and when we say yes it is private we can create the private key i return this public key and private key to my application let me just comment the rest of the code and run it and see how it works this is my public key and this is my private key as you can see from here to here is exactly repeated in my private key as well then private key contains the public key as well when you have the xml of the private key it has a section which is the public key it has some other sections you don't need to know them even i don't know them uh i i literally forget what are the other sections they taught it uh, to us in the university but i'm not using them at all i have the public key and private key and i showed them to you now it is time to use this public key and private key for encrypting and decrypting the data i told you public key is for encrypting then we are passing the public key and the text to the encryption method encryption method does nothing really fancy it creates an rsa and feeds this instance of rsa with the public key that i have used from xml string now i should expect that this instance of rsa algorithm using this public key can encrypt something for me that i can decrypt using my private key this is the message as i mentioned in the previous session in the previous video all security algorithm they just accept byte an array of byte and output array of byte then you need to change this string to array of byte using encoding algorithms we have the array of byte message byte and this message byte should be passed to rsa.encrypt then we need to pass the padding algorithm the padding algorithm is not something that you really need to know uh, it is really complicated it is related to the algorithm how to make it really harder to uh, 
break this encryption file and i always use pkcs1 just be careful if you are encrypting something using this padding algorithm you should decrypt it using exactly the same algorithm and it is returning the array the array of bytes and for decrypting it is exactly the same but we need to feed this instance of rsa algorithm using the private key this private key can decrypt my code using the encrypted data and the same padding algorithm that i mentioned and the output of this algorithm is an array of bytes i'm just make it a string and show it to the users let me save everything and run it as you can see first i see my public key and private key by pressing a key it is going to clear the screen show the encrypted message wait this one should be commented yeah i haven't thought i haven't talked about signing yet this is the encrypted message that i have the original text length is 36 but the length of the encrypted one is 256 we have different types of algorithm different with different types of output we can say that how long should be my output okay but it is something else for really advanced topics you can always read the documentations microsoft documentation and the algorithm documentation about how to use them but um, we are not really using rsa for encrypting and decrypting we usually use this algorithm and symmetric algorithms for signing and validating which means that i have a data i want to send this data to you but i want to be sure that on the way no one manipulated the data no one added something to this data no one removed anything from that data can you remember in the session that i talked about jwt i told you that we have a header for jwt for each token header payload and signature and i said header is some general data payload is the data that you put inside the token and the signature ensure us that the data in header and payload is not manipulated because if someone manipulate this data the signature is not correct anymore but how it works let's see we need to sign something we have a data this data needs to be hashed first why hashing because we need to be sure and the hash result is always a smaller than encrypted result then we hash something create a hash data out of that and then we sign it using the public key okay wait here can you remember that i said for encrypting we use public key for decrypting we use private key for signing we are somehow encrypting this hash data but why we are using private key there is a tricky thing here i'm not going to explain it but be aware that signing is a kind of encryption which needs private key and validating is a kind of decryption which accepts public key it is vice versa do not confuse it uh, and just yeah if you confuse just go back to this video and watch it again now we have the sign data and how can we validate it really easy first we need to get the data from user it is the data that i received i want to be sure that if it is the data that the sender sent or not first i need to hash it generate the hash out of that then i need to decrypt the signed data and the result of this decryption is the hash data that i created here for signing you can see that we sign it out of the hash data i generated the sign data 
and the reverse process, we expect that using the public key, if we decrypt the signed data, the result would be the hash data. Now I have a hash, which belongs to signature, and I have a hash, which belongs to the message itself that I received. If they are equal to each other, I can say that this message has not been manipulated. But if the result of this compare is equal to false, that means someone manipulated the data here. Let's go back to the Visual Studio and see how can we implement this one. Let me uncomment it and uncomment the rest of the code as well and go to the asymmetric encryption. For signing, we accept private key and the data to sign, we convert or encode the data to array of bytes. For signing data, it accepts first the data, second, the hashing algorithm, and third, the padding algorithm. You can use SHA-256. As you can recall, I used exactly the same algorithm for hashing my key, my password for symmetric algorithms. I usually use it. I'm not sure why, but I like it. Uh, and for verifying, we need to have public key valid data to validate the data that we received and the signature as well. We generate the RSA using the public key. We convert the data that we received to array of bytes and pass the data, pass the signature, pass the hashing algorithm and pass the padding key. Let me run it. The first part of the application just shows the public key and private key. The second part shows the encrypted message and signed message. As you can see, the signed message and encrypted message are not the same. The only thing that they have in common is the length. Uh, I haven't shown the length here, but they are the same. Original text is do not forget to like and subscribe and the decrypted text is the same and the verify method returns true because I passed exactly the same text that I sent to method to get in, uh, to get signed. But what if I add one at the end of the text at the end of the text that I want to validate? You will see that it returns false. JWT use exactly the same concept and the same algorithm behind the scene when we are using public key and private key. And it makes our life easier because we can store the private key on our Azure Key Vault or maybe, I'm not sure, on a safe or just on a computer that we have and share the private key with the rest of the consumers for validating the token. It was all the introductionary information that you needed to have a deep dive into JWT and using RSA and public key and private key for JWT. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button right now. Hit the bell right now and like this video. Your uh, likes, your comments, and your subscriptions give me a motivation to record more and more videos for you. And in the comments, just share with me what do you think about the videos? What else do you need to know? If I know that, I would like to make some videos for you about those topics. And I will put this code on my GitHub, which you can find the URL down below in the description. Stay tuned and see you in the next video when I'm talking about JWT and RSA.